From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Jonathan Ambarian in Boulder. I took a closer look at some new state data to find out how the number of marijuana-related DUI cases in Montana is changing. Food banks are seeing a rise in demand across the nation. I'm Donya Backus, and I'll tell you how inflation has more Americans looking for help. I'm Kristen Merkel in Bozeman, and coming up, I talk to the Gallatin Valley Food Bank about the large increase in demand this year compared to last. It is 6.30 on this Wednesday. Chet Lehman, Matt Elwell with you there. Uh, sun coming up over the uh, mining city. Uh, happy it, Wednesday. Uh, happy Wednesday to you. Uh, <laughs> it is warm it outside. It is really warm. Um, yeah, some it, of these numbers are crazy. It really is. It felt great uh, walking outside, but when you right. actually take a look at the numbers, you're going, ooh. Yeah. Some of at our least viewers I am. I don't know. Some of our viewers in Butte are probably sitting out on the deck uh, watching well, this Well, that's morning, exactly yeah. right. 69 <laughs> degrees this morning in Butte. That's at Burt Mooney Airport. Nobody lives there anyway, right? <laughs> so there's that. Uh, 60 <laughs> degrees in Belgrade, 41 <laughs> degrees. I think that was an old George Carlin joke. I believe that's right, yeah. <laughs> uh, spotty showers possible this afternoon. Not a great chance. It's more toward the evening that we see the potential of rain picking up. You can just see a little hit and miss areas that may see a pop-up shower for the afternoon early evening. Heavier rain developing tonight, but again, hot. Daytime highs staying into the 90s. A little bit of smoke and haze in our sky. I'm going to go take a look at our air quality right now and give you a report coming up in just a few minutes. And I'm going to hold my breath and hope some of that pop-up showers happen over my lawn. 631, our top story this half hour. Last night, Bozeman City Commission passed a public welfare emergency due to the closing of the Bozeman Swim Center. Center, which has been closed since mid-May, was shut down by the city after inspectors found structural deficiencies. Now, the emergency declaration waves off the bidding process, which commissioners will say will cut 30 to 45 days off the time to repair the problem. With the declaration, City Manager Jeff Mihalik says he expects to have the swim center open by the fall rather than by the original timeline of New Year's. City says it expects to have more detailed timeline of the construction and cost of repairs at next week's commission meeting. By the way, that emergency... Sir, that is an emergency declaration. There is another building in Bozeman where we can move the swimmers and people who take showers at the swim center and have them do that in another building. We don't have another building that can do that. So when, um, when they talk about it you know, being an emergency, that's one of the um, things that I would consider. Now that emergency declaration applies only to the repairs needed to reopen the swim center and not renovations voters approved back in November of 2021. Other news, since recreational marijuana sales started this past January in Montana, dispensaries have made more than $174 million in both medical and adult use sales. That's according to the latest reports released by the Department of Revenue. That comes out to more than $25 million in statewide taxes, $22.5 million in adult use sales tax, and $2.4 million in medical use sales tax. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Amberian went behind the money and dug into the data to see how the number of DUIs attributed to marijuana changed since the start of recreational sales. A report from the Montana Department of Justice shows the number of DUI cases in which a suspect has tested positive for marijuana has increased over the last few years. And leaders with the Montana Highway Patrol say that matches with what they've seen on the roads. But it's an issue that's more complex than just a single number. The information comes in the annual report from the Forensic Science Division, commonly known as the State Crime Lab. In 2021, the first year after possession of marijuana was decriminalized in Montana, the lab reported 621 DUI cases where samples tested positive for THC or the products it breaks down into. Leaders noted that's an increase of 17% over 2020 when there were 530 such cases. But it's not a trend that only began then. In 2019, there were 464 DUI cases testing positive for marijuana-related substances. There were 454 in 2018 and 284 in 2017. MHP Sergeant Jay Nelson says the agency can't point to one factor to explain the entire increase. You know, I think it's a combination of, of all of this. I mean, uh, uh, to say specifically it's about legalization, I don't think we have the data to show that. Another trend has been a jump in DUI samples showing multiple substances. In 2021, the crime lab reported 127 cases where someone tested positive for both alcohol and THC, and 205 where they showed alcohol, THC, and another drug. 
Pepper Peterson, president and CEO of the Montana Cannabis Guild, says that data backs up their contention that few drivers are being cited for marijuana impairment alone. What we're seeing is that people who are traditionally impaired on something might be adding marijuana to the mix. The increase in reported cases also comes as law enforcement puts a greater emphasis on finding cases of drug-related impairment. For the last few years, all MHP troopers have gone through training to identify signs, and some undergo more extensive work to become drug recognition experts. And it's just uh, so important in today's use where, where we have poly drug use statewide. Currently, 27 MHP troopers out of more than 250 statewide are trained as drug recognition experts, and leaders say that shows the emphasis they're trying to put on addressing DUI. In Boulder, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. 635 now. Inflation has millions of Americans struggling to make ends meet and looking for help. Now, food banks and pantries are seeing a big jump in demand. CBS's Daniel Bacchus reports. The long line at this recent food distribution event outside of Los Angeles is a familiar sight. Across the country, charities say there is a rise in the number of people needing help. Diane Martinez says she's here because inflation has priced her out. The prices of food are so high and they're going up higher every day. Food banks saw a big jump in demand during the pandemic, but we're hoping for a change this year. For 2022, we're expecting things to really start sliding down in terms of the demand for food assistance. Um, but really with the inflation hit, we, we saw another upsurge. In June, prices at the grocery store rose more than 12 percent, the largest one-year increase since 1979. In this Chicago neighborhood, it's not just high prices that's a problem. There's also a lack of affordable grocery stores in the area. That's why 250 people, including Jimmy King Jr., came to this pop-up pantry event. Now, I'm really blessed, and the people of this community are blessed to really for this to be going on. Families making these decisions between filling their gas tank to get to work, um, paying the rent, paying utilities, other basic expenses, and meeting their food costs. Higher costs and an influx of people to feed has many charities struggling. Food banks everywhere are looking for more donations so they can continue to help everyone in need. Danya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. As inflation and the high cost of living are greatly affecting Bozeman, I'm here at the Gallatin Valley Food Bank to discuss how they're increasing their supply to keep up with the growing demand. I've seen um, a pretty huge increase. It really started, like it was very noticeable in March. March, April, May, and June have all been um, significantly higher than the year prior. Jill Holder, the HRDC's Food and Nutrition Department Director, says the food bank is trying to maintain their supplies with the growing demand for food in Gallatin County. I mean, we always try to stay ahead of it with our, our um, inventory, but there are things that go much quicker than other things. She says inflation is a part of why they have needed to increase their supply. She believes that there are several factors that contributed to this need for food, such as Family tax credit is, is a, um, you know, they're not getting that monthly allotment now. That went away when the gas prices went up and the food prices went up. She also says the increase in the cost of living has impacted many people they see. Certainly housing prices are such a huge part of, of what we see. So many people come in and say, my rent just was raised. In March of 2021, the food bank served 901 households. In March of 2022, they served 1,395 households. This is a 55% increase in demand in just a year. In May, we saw a 100% increase. In June, we saw a 58% increase. The increase in assisting more households means a tight budget could get tighter. At the pace we're at, we'll have spent our whole food budget by December. Volunteers and donors of the food bank are a huge source of help with making sure people are getting the food they need. We would be sunk without our volunteers and our donors. Holder says she doesn't want people to hide from help and the Gallatin Valley Food Bank is always here to assist community members. So we're really trying to make sure people get what they need. In Bozeman, Kristen Merkel, MTN News. All right, 639. Believe it or not, it's likely you've been said or have actually said to somebody, God bless you after sneezing. But why do we say that specific saying? Newsy's Casey Mendoza explains. If you're trying to live that hashtag blessed life, try sneezing. Chances are you might get this in response. Bless you. 
God bless you, my child. We can't pinpoint exactly where the God bless you response started, but there are some theories. A long time ago, people used to think that it wasn't just snot leaving your nose when you sneezed. They thought your soul escaped too. And well, if that was really true, people thought saying God bless you was the least they could do to help out. Another theory involves the Vatican. In the 6th century, a plague wiped out many in Europe. It said Pope Gregory I decreed that when you heard someone sneeze, you should shout out blessings to protect them. Fast forward to the 14th century, it's possible we started saying God bless you during the bubonic plague, because sneezing was a sign that you might be sick with it. Today, it's mostly an ingrained reaction. One doctor told the New York Times that it's become an utterance without specific meaning other than a response to a sneeze that is polite in some way. If you don't need help from a higher power after an Achu, consider some alternatives. In German, they say Gesundheit, and in Spanish-speaking countries, they say Salud after a sneeze, which translates roughly to a wishing of good health. Happy sneezing, Casey Mendoza, Newsy, Chicago. We've been saying it a lot to each other in the last couple of days. We have, too. yeah. It's been kind of weird and dusty and all you that. You get whole the smoke thing, so. in there. And what do I normally say when somebody sneezes? What? Gross. Gross. That's exactly what he says. <laughs> it's a true story. I don't know. That's just... Well, bless you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I need all the blessings. <laughs> there I we go. Get. And that's always your answer. Yeah, 641. <laughs> We're going to take a break. <laughs>